a new LED lamp arrived today, and it's quite unusual. It's one of the cheaper filament ones, and it's only rated one watt. And I was expecting this to be a bit one-sided in terms of the light, because the way it was described was a cob um, LED array, which to me normally indicates a sort of aluminium or a printed circuit board plate with the chips just on one side. But in reality, uh, the cob involved is made of glass, and the chips are mounted directly onto the glass. So it might be that case where they coat the glass in a sapphire coating, like the scratch-proof glass, and then apply the chips directly onto that. Not 100% sure. But anyway, I'll plug this in and you shall see it lit. So there we go. It looks ripply on the um, camera because there is quite a lot of ripple on top, but looking at it, it's not easy to see because it is just a gentle sinusoidal ripple. It's not a sort of fairly, it's not flickering too excessively. So I've already uh, reverse engineered the circuit board. Uh, this arrived this morning, I instantly took it to bits. Uh, it was quite uh, tricky to get the thing out. I had to completely destroy the lamp to get it out. So I'll show you the circuitry that's uh, inside it. I'll also give you a close up of this just to see that it's got phosphor on both sides of glass but there's a clear glass in the middle and when it's lit at very low level um, you can see a sort of blue glow from the middle and that must just be the blue LEDs that are being used to stimulate the phosphor with this sort of blue light leaking out the sides but anyway, I digress Here, here's the circuit diagram and I'll give you a close up of the circuit board too there's a circuit board, not many components on it there are four components in the back. There's uh, two, two uh, well, th should I say three surface mount resistors and one bridge rectifier. And here's the circuit, and to be honest, I'm not overly thrilled by the circuit. 240 volts comes in. It goes through a very low 3.9 ohm inrush uh, resistor, which is really just a fuse more than anything else. And then it goes through a 390 nanofarad capacitor, and what's a good feature about this is that instead of having a 1 mega ohm resistor across it that's probably just being pushed a wee bit high in the voltage side of things, they've actually got two 510k surface mount resistors across it to keep it within the sort of voltage rating. Then, unusually, after the capacitor, it's got a 470 volt metal oxide varistor, then an MB10F surface mount bridge rectifier. On the other side of the rectifier, the DC side, there's a 4.7 microfarad 250 volt capacitor, and you guys know that I'm not overly thrilled at the idea of uh, the two, 250 volt. I'd rather it was 400 volt capacitors, because if an LED goes open circuit the LED panel, the, capa the capacitor does get overvolted. However, it should only have about 8.6 volts across at normal operation, and it's got a one mega ohm discharge resistor. The LEDs themselves, I measured it as a current of 20 milliamp flowing through them and 80 volts across them. So what's the LED dissipation at that then? Um, say 80.6 volts times 0 0.02 equals LED dissipation 1.6 watts. Pretty good, really. Pretty close. I think it was rated a 1.5 watt lamp. So the LED array itself looks like this. The glass, if I, I put a resistor in line with another power supply and it just made the chips glow at very low level and you could count them and there were 28 chips there were 9, 10 and 9 and they're mounted on one side of the glass as far as I can see with a sort of conductive film on it um, it's really hard to tell I don't know if there's gold wire tucked in there somewhere I'm really not sure how the construction is because it is all hidden under the phosphor so here's the glass uh, the chips are mounted as far as I can see on one side then a pull of the phosphor put over the top of them and then because light will then be bounced back in the opposite direction, the, there's a layer of phosphor on the other side too, and it makes it very double-sided. It's actually very good. It pr produces a very good effect. It's got fairly even illumination around it. Um, interestingly, the glass bulb actually has a number 28 written inside on the glass stem, and that it just indicates how many LEDs are in it. That's quite interesting. Again, it's glass, and it's been sealed with a wee pip. It's just been manufactured as if it was an ordinary lamp. But in this instance, it was the type with the sort of plastic base and then the uh, screw thread with the electronics right at the base. So, you know, it's one of the cheaper filamenty type lamps, but um, it's actually very good. However, I wish the circuitry was just a wee bit different. Um, I would like to have seen um, <coughs> the smoothing, 
the capacitor there and then a resistor on the output to actually try and um, limit the current. So that at the moment the LEDs are sitting directly across the capacitor and that generates quite a lot of ripple on each sort of half wave. But uh, if they'd put a resistor in series of a decent value, um, it would have made it slightly less efficient, but it would probably have got rid of some of that ripple, and that would have uh, improved it. But other than that, you know, it's, it's quite an attractive lamp. I really would like to see some of these made in different colours. I'm not sure if they used, say, green chips or something like that. I'm not sure if they'd have to put some sort of reflective paste on and place the phosphor to try and make it three-dimensional, viewable from the other side or if just the chips would be visible from both sides. Interesting, though, I'd, I'd really like to see these in coloured lamps. It's be, it would make an ideal replacement for the traditional coloured golf ball lamp often used in festoon. So, yeah, it's quite a nice lamp, I think. I'm going to go and buy another of them.